Hello everybody and welcome to day two of our level one Lotro challenge. Uh, how's everybody doing out there? I hope you're doing well. I've got my Rittermark blend coffee here. Mm-mm. Delicious. Now, uh, I did notice yesterday's stream I had a weird feedback happening. So if you if you do notice any feedback, let me know and I can continue to adjust the levels on my microphone. But anyway, let's see. Day two, level one. Here's what we were doing yesterday. Uh, we had a, a bit of an experiment going. The idea was, was, it was, it was twofold, two um, hypotheses we were looking to prove or disprove. Uh, could you get a character out of the introduction at level one? And then number two, if you kept them at level one and then used the uh, skip introduction feature from the Lotro store, what would, what, would, what would happen? That's what we were trying to figure out. So we made our little hobbit boy here. Say hey to everybody, Roxo. And this, we loaded the tutorial. And the second we did, we put this. Not that. That's the D log. We put this tortoise, stone of the tortoise, in his pocket scissors. And if you can't read that on your screen there, the stone of the tortoise is the XP disabler. So a lot of people typically use this if they're playing a Slotro group where they all progress uh, at the same level together, or if they want to experience content at uh, the intended level. You see this oftentimes on my home server of Landreval. There are some, there's even a kinship where they've all capped their characters at level 50, um, as if they were on a legendary server. But not us. What we did was we put this on immediately to see what would happen if we stayed level one. Uh, so as you can see, I put it on right away. I have zero experience, zero out of 100, which would got, have gotten me out of level one and on to level two. And uh, there we began. And now we were fortunately assisted by one Mr. Hobbit, who um, did a little background research for us. So while I was here slogging away in the trenches of the introduction, it actually wasn't that bad, he went ahead, rolled a level one character, bought the stone of the tortoise and then he used the skip introduction feature and he came out of the introduction at level one so we are about to finish part the uh, the initial part of our hypothesis which is can we get a level one character all the way through the introduction without using the uh novice thing the skip intro thing yeah so oh here's Bo. Is that Bo? Yeah, Bo gave me a little slap earlier, so you know they're all friendly here on the Treebeard server. Uh, where we left things off yesterday was uh, at the very end of the introduction. We were just about to go through the conclusion of the introduction. Uh, the Blackwells are about to attack Archit, and we're going to see if we can survive um, the encounter. So I think that's all we needed to discuss, so we're going to go ahead and see what happens here. I got a little worried yesterday. Oh, bear. Got a little worried yesterday because when well, we got towards the end here, the enemies are about level 6. I think we might even have some level 7s here in the conclusion. And if you've played enough Lotro, you begin to understand that when you hit about 5 levels higher, you're attacking mobs that are 5 levels higher, you start to miss a lot. And it becomes very difficult to defeat them. So, I, I am a little concerned. I felt concerned yesterday, then I felt good about this, and now I'm feeling concerned again. So we're going to see what happens. Oh, those guys are dead. Oh, boy. That's awkward. And then if and when we get through the introduction here, what we're going to do is um, just start playing around in the game world, see how far we can get. One thing Mr. Hobbit also told us was that the um, there are several things you cannot do uh, once you are out into the world at level one. And so we're, with that in mind, we're going to see how far we can get. Okay, so far so good. Prisoner's only level four. Auto the brigand busted out of jail. Ooh, okay. Um, uh oh, poor guy. So one of the things that he said didn't work was 
very concerning to me, and that was the VIP booster. Um, if you are a VIP, which is a subscriber in this game, you get access to a few different items. Um, one of which gives you access to the bank, the vault, the auction house, just from your inventory. The other one is a little, it's the subscriber's jug, which gives you item wear reduction, so you're not constantly shelling out money to have your stuff repaired. And also, it gives you a, a crafting boost. And my thought with this character, besides the sheer novelty of having a level 1 character out marching around on Treebeard, was to uh, use him as a crafter. I thought prospecting at level 1 could be particularly fun and adventurous and foolish. But... I'm a little spoiled. I like having my um, crafting speed booster. So not only is this a test of the uh, things that we can do in-game, it's also a test of my patience. We'll see if I can stand having um, slow crafting. Look, Hartley is ahead. All must not be lost. Well met, friend. Is the crafting hall safe? No voice acting for Mr. Atley. Though he definitely has one of my favorite uh, throwback moments later on in the game. I won't spoil it for you if you're not that far ahead, but we'll uh, we'll just say that Atley makes a comeback later, much later on in the game. And that's something that's always impressed me with the stories in Lotro is that, um, man, they got some deep callbacks, especially with some of the more recent updates and content. Like, they're shouting out stuff and referring to stuff that happened at this point in the game, in the beginning. Here are some, you know, I guess in the case of Minas Morgul, that would have been 13 Although years later. Burns, I, still hold out hope. I don't know if other MMOs do that. Um, I suppose Warcraft has lots of classic characters they still have around and refer to, but I don't know how they do their storytelling. Speaking of storytelling... It's about to get grim, so you're going to want to go ahead and get the kids out of the room. I'm going to go ahead and sneak off over here. Yeah, sure. I mentioned patience before, that was the other... That was the other part of the equation, was uh, rolling a burglar, which would, is fun and very hobbity, and I'm doing plenty of damage, as you can see, as a level 1. But man, that sneak, that slow level 1 sneak is a rough... Uh, my main is a capped out burglar, and um, not even at level cap, I think level 7, when you're able to choose a trait tree, if you choose the red or blue trees, the quiet knife or the gambler, you immediately get a sneak speed boost. So that's... Uh, that's a real treat. So having to go back and use this one is uh, not my favorite. We'll say that. But it's not that bad. It's also nice having a brief skill rotation. No more time for games. Uh -oh. We come for the ring. If you are literally having a lunch in here, I hope this isn't upsetting your stomach. That's something I find myself thinking about a lot with this game is in other older games or other media as well. They didn't have the realistic graphics here, so you know, obviously the big release this year was Resident Evil. One of the big releases this year was Resident Evil Village. And so you had a lot of fancy next gen 8K graphics to, um, oh boy, oh boy, sorry, my train of thought was disrupted by Calder Cobb, it's me, the rumor monger, uh, anyway, you have these beautiful graphics with Resident Evil Village, uh, with which to terrify you, but it doesn't leave anything to the imagination, I assume, actually, I actually haven't played Village, because I'm a noob, um, but with an older game like this, some of the more brutal stuff is, of course, suggested more than depicted uh, and I wonder if there's something a little bit more disturbing about that it's like reading something in a book 
as opposed to seeing it on screen. Um, for some people, um, the suggestion of whatever's going on in the story is more terrifying than actually seeing it depicted. I don't know. That's just a thought I had. All right, we're out of the introduction. We are officially novices now. If you don't know what that means, when you um, get out of the introduction, hello, I know my buttons, you complete the novice deed and you get the title of novice, which gives you access to certain things. Oh, it's not a it's not a title, it's just a deed. I guess I should probably know what I'm talking about before I go to just to uh, show you these things. No. Interesting. I wonder where they hide that. I'll have to look that up later. In any case, we're out. So now that we're a novice, we can actually use our writing skill. I am, as I said, stuck in with this game and a bit spoiled. So I have uh, got all these traits in here as well. What is going on here? I think we may have stumbled on another snag here. It says I require the writing trait, but I believe it requires novice. Okay, 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 okay. So that's very interesting. So, we got out of the introduction at level one. We did not earn the novice trait. So maybe that's tied to your level, level five, level seven, whatever it might be. So let's go into the store. I don't know, we can't pull out. So what I was going to do was pull up the uh, skip the introduction bit, but I don't think we can do that since we're out of the intro. No, let's try skip. Okay, here we go. So we can still buy this. Using this item will grant your character a quest to skip the introduction area of the game, complete the quest to advance your character to level approximately five, and transport to little delving in the Shire. Characters will be granted appropriate gear and money. Well, that's extremely interesting. So I guess if we do that, it gives us the veteran or novice trait, whatever that is. So we can then use the writing skill but we're not going to do that yet. That'll be our last, uh, the last thing we do. Toot my own horn there for a second. That's extremely interesting. Okay. Can't pick up this quest because we're not high enough level. We can do some crafting. So Alf Goodcliff here is going to advise us to head over to Mickledelving. And okay, so we don't even have a milestone trait. That is a very interesting. Uh, and again, for the one of you who doesn't know, the milestone trait is uh, where you tie your, uh, what do you call it, the um, return to home skill. So it's a, it's a skill with a cooldown of an hour, which allows you to get back to wherever you need to go. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm an idiot. Just a plain old idiot. I had all that whole rant about the novice trait, and there it was right behind me. So now I can learn writing. Okay. Oof. Now that's funny. All that fuss. So now let's get a horse. A horse, of course. Okay, so you don't get the novice trait by being a particular level. You get the novice trait by completing the quest you were supposed to complete in the first place. Let's see. Fireworks there. Fireworks or entertainment. Yeah, let's have a poochie. Okay. Now nah, we're getting it done. Alright. Get out of here, pooch. You don't need that. Put this over here. Alright, now we gotta pick a horse, the most important thing. And we're going to go with our plain old bay pony. Okay, very good. So let's see what happens now. Even though we have our horse, we're going to leg it because the little delving is such an underappreciated area. Mr. Hobbit's in the house! Mr. Hobbit, I just did such a goof. I don't know if you were here for that or not. I went on this whole thing about how I didn't think I got the novice trait because I was level one, and then I turned around and I just had to complete my quest. 
very silly. I was even going to buy the uh, the thing from the store. Okay, this is interesting because this is the first Hobbit I've rolled here on Treebeard. Here's the shady, shady looking uh, ranger here. This is the way to set the difficulty, which I hadn't looked at since they changed the wording, so it actually went in order of difficulty. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is complete this crafting quest and head, uh, so we're heading to the Mickle Delving. I've heard people say Michael Delving, but I'm 99% sure it's Mickle Delving. Yeah, Mr. Hobbit says he auto-completed auto that with the level skip. I think that's right. I think it treats you as if you had fully completed the um, introduction along with all the quests. So I'll ask you there, Mr. good old Mr. Hobbit, since uh, I noticed yesterday I had some weird buzzing or feedback happening with my mic. Are we getting that today, or does it sound okay? Thank you, sir. All right, let's mount up. I will say I absolutely love questing in the Shire. I don't care how uh, pastoral or boring the quest is. I never get sick of running chores for hobbits. I just did uh, North Cotton Farm on my main here on the Treebeard server. And I got to tell you, that was probably a little bit more fun than uh, chopping orc necks for a while. Mr. Hobbit says you can also use an XP boost with level skip to get through intro at a high... Oh, okay. So you apply the XP boost before you do the level skip and it, it gets you out at a higher level. That's interesting. I saw... Uh, what's his name? Another streamer doing Treebeard fast leveling, quote-unquote. I didn't have time to uh, watch the stream for very long, but I, I was a little bit perplexed. Like, how do you do fast leveling on Treebeard? when we have our 60% XP reduction. We're skipping all that. Joke's on them, because we're not getting any XP. Agreed, North Cotton Farm is great. I've never had so much fun churning butter. Hello. Good day. Good day to you. All right. So I was thinking about it, and I think this boy uh, ought to be... Ooh, busy crafting facilities. I was thinking this guy should be the... Um, well, let's just... Uh, what was it? Tinker? Yes. For a few reasons. Just a uh, my main is a historian, which is a weaponsmith, farmer, and scholar. And so being able to run the jewels and prospect for ore, as well as cook whatever Penphilos, my elf, can farm. Seems pretty good. And we're going to see just how much we can prospect at level 1 without getting absolutely destroyed. Probably not going to work out, but, you know, it'll be fun. Alright, let's organize our stuff here, sell off a bunch of junk we don't need, and then it's off to the mines. It is a lovely day. We're going to keep these fireworks. I suppose we should keep some potions to keep us alive, I should say. Alrighty. And let's go into the vault here. Let's do... I don't think I really need any of that extra junk that I got with my goodies, but we'll keep it in. Keep our stuff together just in case. Let's do this. And one other thing I wanted to check that I'm pretty sure we're absolutely not going to be able to do is to use the um, Tinker tools, the tools of the Tinker. But I just kind of want to confirm that for my own paranoia. Hmm. 
there you go just as mr hobbit said not high enough level to get our goodies where's the auction house there we go Zoop. is there something i can do for you tools of the tinker oh we can use them huzzah let's see item level 11 okay so good so the item level is 11 but there is no minimum level uh, to be to use them that's good that's gonna save us a lot of time so we're gonna go ahead and buy that let's see we can use the superior tools okay 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 Hopefully my noisy neighbor isn't drowning out my voice. Got to get that yard work done. Let's just go ahead and buy that then. Awesome. That's got me feeling pretty good about this business. Because as I said, uh, as we just said, we can't use the XP, uh, excuse me, the crafting speeder upper as a VIP. So this will at least give us a little bit of a boost. We can't sell those. We're going to chuck these out. I mentioned this yesterday. I think, uh, you know, if I do, if I am able to stream um, on a more regular basis with a regular schedule, it might be worth doing the Marie Marie Kondo of Hobbits uh, and talk about item management because I'm just determined uh, to keep my bag organized. Okay, so we can get this quest, but I don't really want it. Okay, just in case anyone was wondering, that is a hobbit named Ravioli, and that's pretty cute. So let's go ahead and do some prospecting and see how far we get, and then we'll go back and do um, some proper crafting and things like that, and see how it goes. We got our ore tracker on. Haven't seen anything yet, but I've done this enough times to know that if we head towards these shrews over here, we're going to come stumble upon some copper, which we have. Here we go. And in case anyone ever doubted our skills, we can definitely mine from horseback. And it's pretty great. And I don't think these... Oh, there's a wolf. Got to mine the wolf. I was going to say that the shrews, which you can see when in the distance there, are not uh, aggressive. They'll threaten you, but they'll not attack you on sight. It's not a fight on sight situation, but those wolves are a different story. So, let's see. I reckon, do some quick math. I'll get out my abacus here. Three, top rank it, three times eight. So eight one, two, okay, so we're gonna need, bye bye calculations, carry the one. We're gonna need a lot more ore. So we're just gonna have a jolly ride through the Shire and get rained on and see what happens. Where to go? Let's head down, let's head down to my house. And cut through the fields here. Oof, everything is red. That's absolutely terrifying. I was not factoring in emotional distress. I definitely expected to be annoyed by the crafting speed, but not absolutely terrified by shrews. Let's see if I was right. Yes, okay. There we go. Oop. There we are. Oh, well, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a lovely lunch. And I hope that you counted on watching some random on Twitch farming for copper ore in the Shire on your lunch break. Or if you're like me and you're off work for the summer, I hope you are still in your PJs. I hope you just woke up, in fact, even if you're here on the East Coast like me. Fortunate la, the rain's going to obscure our view, but I think we can get a pretty good view of the hill from where we are now. Let's go look. Oh, never mind. We're being led off course by the ore tracker. So this was the ore tracker crafting, uh, what do you call it, harvesting nodes tracker thingy. Um, I don't know if that was common in video games before World of Warcraft. We're not going to talk about the Blizzard Activision drama, by the way. Positive summer vibes only 
Um, but the tracker thing was always so strange to me because it's one of those things that is extremely convenient um, in terms of gameplay. So you can just kind of know where to go to find the stuff. Uh, there's many of those in this game. The fact that I can mine from horseback or chop wood from horseback or pick up cabbages on the ground from horseback it was very appealing to me as a player. But uh, if you're trying to be a bit more immersive, I have to wonder what um, what does that look like? Is, is my, my hobbit boy over here just <laughs> sniffing the air? Uh, and he smells the tang of copper on the wind. Okay, we gotta get out of here quick. This boar's about to charge us. Oh, no, he's wandered off. We're good. I'm starting to, I think I mentioned this yesterday as well, but I'm starting to get to understand you crazy deadly plus six people. Uh, because the imminent threat of danger is a little bit exhilarating. Getting gored to death by a boar in the middle of the Shire is definitely... Um, excites the nerves a little bit more than just chopping everything up on my, my main champion. Where to next? I expect most... Okay. Most of the Shire is Tier 1 until you get a little bit eastwards here. I think this region over here is where the barrel wire and the Tier 2 ore starts to pop up. So I think as long as we stick to the western part of the Shire... I guess technically... Is this the west farthing? I can't remember. They divided it up so strangely when they made this. As long as we stick to the west farthing, we're going to be finding plenty of copper. And lots of danger and excitement. So let's check it out. Let's head down into the swamp and then up over hill. And then we'll map back home and do a, do a bit of crafting before I got to go. Before lunch break is over. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, the red name gave me a start. But it's just some gnats. Just some, just some good old gnats. Let's go find the road. Right, are these slime going to attack us? Nope. Let's find the road. Oh, there's some copper. Now, there is a named elite master, Warg, that roams these parts. So hopefully we can avoid him. Or her. I don't know. That's the other thing, too, is, that's coming to mind with this whole disable XP thing is is it worth doing any quests or deeds while I'm out here? Can I even get deeds? I don't know. Um, and in that case, is it worth it? I don't think so, because I'm never going to get virtues. It's nice to complete things. But even in the case of a max level character, like my, my mains, um, there's still progression, right? So there's still legendary items to work on. Mine are mostly done, but you know, oh, this guy got the copper first. Um, my allies are mostly done on my main characters, um, but there is always that. There's virtues, there's, uh, what do you call it, the, not the deed, the faction rep and things like that. So even though you're not leveling up, there's still a lot to do. But here at level one, it doesn't even count. Like our crafting will go up, I hope. Um, I don't know about factions, so that could be useful, especially for crafting. But no, I don't think so, because with the factions, now that they've altered them, you generally have to complete a quest to actually enable the uh, reputation faction. I don't know if that's true for, like, um, I think for certain low-level rep items, you can do that, but I don't know. So there's not, hello, what? Look who it is. It's our old pal, Mr. Hobbit. Nice to see you, Mr. Hobbit. Lead on, sir. Actually, you follow me, because I need... That is a, that is the cutest little boar. Let's get a look at this boar. I didn't care, you know... All right, so newbies, if you didn't know, when they did the War of Three Peaks mini expansion last year, if you backed it like Mr. Hobbit did, and you got the boar, or you would get a boar mount. And at first I was like, you want to know what? I'm not crazy about these boars. That's just it's just straight out of the Hobbit films, which I didn't care for. But seeing a Hobbit on a boar, that's kind of cute. Okay, let's crack on here. Let's go find some ore. Mr. Hobbit's gonna watch our back. So now I'm feeling not feel like we could be even a little bit more risky if we've got our pocket mini. 
helping us out here. Where have you gone? All right, here we go. We got a wild boar to protect us on the hunt for ore. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so progression. I don't know if it's going to be worth doing anything besides crafting. But craft we shall. What a pleasant surprise, Mr. Hobbit. You cracked me up. <laughs> Just rolling up out of nowhere. Uh, can't be too careful with these dower hands around. All right, let's see. Here's some copper this way. Got to keep an eye on those stinky dwarves. We ride. Where to next? Let's head... Yeah, we don't need to go this way. Nothing but spiders and bears this way, so we're going to go this way instead. Let's get Mr. Hobbit in our fellowship here. Whoop. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right. See another one over here. Let's see how many have I got now. We are up to 29. Okay. I don't know if I can get that one. Let's try it out. Feeling a bit emboldened with this guy. All right, we've done it. Bear. Generally, bears don't fight on sight, so they don't worry me. It's those tricksy spiders that truly worry me. Can I mine fast enough to keep this bear off me? Ooh. We did it. You'd imagine those boars just, just hanging out sunbathing. We come clopping through, hunting for precious minerals. Alright, so we're going to do a loop, we're going to head down to Hobbiton, and we're going to head back to Mickledelving with our loot. we got to off-road it to make sure we actually get something. Uh oh we're under attack. Who's on us? It's a bear. Ugh. Can't see! <laughs> I'm in such distress! You don't hear a lot of there we go. Alright, he's gone. You don't hear a lot of stories about hobbits being mauled, but you know it had to happen every once in a while. Yes. So the good thing we can toss the sienna we're picking up to the scholar to make dye. That'll be nice. Coffee break. <sighs> Cheers, Mr. Hobbit. Thanks for stopping by, bud. It was a delightful surprise. All right.
right, so where are we now? We are heading into Hobbiton. And I think in the interest of time, because I do have to go pretty soon, we'll zap back home. And we'll get one more. I don't think there's any. Over, I don't remember ever seeing any copper over here. Let's go this way towards the apple doors. Grab one more cot, uh, copper and then head on home. Pay our respects to the gaffer. Nothing. I guess Hobbiton isn't known for its deposits of precious minerals. But they do have apples. Mm -mm. Okay, so we can get deeds. We got the farm deed. We get Virtue XP and Marks and, and Rep. Hmm. Interesting. More experiments for another time. One last spot to check, then we'll be on our way. Nothing, just a bunch of wolves. All right, let's head back to Mickle Delving and craft some stuff. Do do. So we won't have quite enough to get to the next uh, crafting tier, but that's okay. It is truly slow tro, so I'm not too worried about it. My outfit, on the other hand, doesn't look quite right. So maybe we can um, amend that. If there's one thing everyone ought to know about low tro, it's that we got to look good when we are lowing the tros. At least got to look appropriate. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Because what have I got? I've got this random th uh, Rohirrim armor. That's no good. I've got the Azure festive Azure tunic, which I don't remember what that was for. I think it was an anniversary gift. And we got our noob burglar clothes. So we're just going to leave that as is as I bump into the wall here. Let's head on over to the forge and see what happens. Okay. All right. Let's see how slow this is. I'm just going to craft all. See how it goes. That's pretty slow. That is pretty, pretty slow. Now, some of you might be saying, shoreless, it's not that slow. I'm saying it's slow. Um, because I'm a spoiled VIP who's used to having his, his XP, his crafting speed booster. So we're in, I don't know. We'll see how it goes for hashtag level one squad. Me and Mr. Hobbit are uh, going to continue these adventures. And rather than make you watch me craft 13 more pieces of copper, uh, we're going to crack on here and, and um, close out by saying thank you for just tuning in. Thank you for watching this on demand if that's what you're doing. And check me out this Tuesday on Lotro stream uh, once a month. What I'm going to be doing is a new tradition of doing a research stream for my podcast. My podcast is called Beneath Your Feet. It's an on again, off again podcast that I'm trying to make more on again. And as part of that, uh, we're going to explore a particular region of Middle Earth once a month on Lotro stream as research for the show. Uh, so that'll the first episode is going to be this Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern, on twitch.tv slash LotroStream. I hope to see all of you there. And I don't know when I'm going to do another level 1 adventure here. Hopefully it won't be too long, and hopefully you can join me for that. I hope you all take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye!